Oh, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the Alloy Grandstream webinar on full paging systems uh, for today. My name is Kenny Mo, uh, Apex Sales Manager. So I'm I'm seeing that you know a lot of people um, were coming in. Actually, <laughs> some of the participants actually were waiting for ten minutes before it starts. So thank you so much for joining, and thank I'd like to thank Eloy for arranging this webinar. So um, today's webinar will be hosted by uh, one of our um, support team, uh, Shi Ying. Uh, most of you may know um, Shi Ying because uh, she's been doing um, Grassroom Academy um, last year. Uh, I, I really hope that all of you started um, this year very well and everyone is safe. So um, I'll ask um, Shi Ying to um, uh, share her screen uh, and start the presentation for you uh, for today. Mm. Can, 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 can you, can you, uh, just want to uh, carry, uh, confirm with you, do you see the share button under your screen? Because I couldn't. Mm, let me. Do, do you have the share button under your web? Yes. Yes. Oh. Right. Hey, give me a second. Let me exit around. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry for the delay, everyone. So you guys, can you see my screen? Really okay? Yeah, she is working okay. fine. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead. Sorry. Thanks. Sorry for the delay, everyone. <laughs> well, um, for today's presentation, will be quite brief and simple because um, GSC 3510 and GSC 3505 is quite, um, it's very simple device and uh, it looks like our phones and, but it's not much configuration. So, Let's move forward. Okay. So as you can see, Grandstream has uh, two models for a SIP speaker, um, SIP intercom speaker. We have for uh, the GSC 35, 3505, which is a one-way SIP intercom speaker. And the other model is GSC 3510, which is a um, two-way full-to-black um, SIP intercom with a uh, speaker and microphones. So these two speakers allow the officers, schools, like hospital, um, apartment, and many more to build a very powerful voice in the comm solution and to expand the security and communications. So both of them, um, with their hi-fi speaker, is able to deliver the full band audio. And then for GSC 3510, it adds a state-of-art microphone array with a pickup distance up to 4.2 meters. So this is how it looks like. Um, so first we look at a GSC 3510. So this is the two-way SIP speaker because it has a, a wireless speaker and microphones and it has um, eight watt uh, high fidelity speaker. So as you can see um, from, um, you can see at the diagram at the bottom, it provides a three di directional microphone with a multi-channel microphone arrays and it works like a beam forming so it supports up to four meter voice pickup distance. It has an integrated dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, network ports with PoE, and then it has the 
20 kilohertz full band audio, including uh, full band opus and the wide band uh, G7, G722 cordless support. And then uh, at once, it has at one acoustic um, eco cancellation with full to blast two way audio. So another thing that um, might not in document documented in the user manual that it actually it would uh, it has a uh, one gig memory and then we have uh, eight gig flash memory as well. So for the recording, some of the customer might uh, want to note how many recording or the capacity available in this uh, devices. So it support up to maximum of three hundred mega uh, megabytes of recording files. So the next one would be the one-way uh, speaker. So it only allowed speaker. And then other feature will be similar to the 3510. For example, it has an 8 watts high fidelity speaker. It provides a three-directional di microphones with uh, uh, multi-channel microphones arrays, integrated dual-band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as the network ports with PoE. And then um, it supports uh, 20 kilohertz full band audio, including um, the uppers and also the wide band codec supports, as well as it has uh, at one acoustic echo, um, echo cancellation with the two, full to blast two-way audio as well. So these are the features, highlights of this uh, GSC 3500 series models. So once you get this um, device out of the box, the first thing is you should uh, actually connect it and access to the web interface. So how, we, how do we do? So um, for the GSC devices, it's actually respond to our HTTP or HTTPS request. So inside this devices, it has an embedded HTML pages allow the admins to configure application phone through the web browser. Uh, so for example, you can, you allow, you can use um, Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Google Chrome to actually to assess the web interface of these devices. So once you get it out of the box, connect it to the computer that has the same network as uh, the GSC, and then to discover and assess the configuration interface using the MAC address. So if you do not use, if you do not want to use the IP scanner or the DSCP port, you can actually uh, log in the device interface using the MAC address. So try to locate the MAC address on the MAC tag of the unit. Usually, it's printed or um, printed or on the underside of the devices or even on the packaging box. So make sure you connect and then put it out, and then from the computer connected to the same network of the. Um, with the GSC devices, you can type in this um, URL or the link. So this is the format or the syntax. So make sure you um, key in correctly, HTTPS, and then a semicolon, uh, double, double slash, and then GSC underscore my address dot local. So this unit can be assessed by uh, using on the web browser. So, you will, so once you get into it, you will see this uh, login page where it prompts you to enter the uh, user names as well as the password. So the default username and password will be admin admin. So what to put it up? So what kind of application can this GSC unit to be uh, to be used as? First, as you can see in this diagram, you can add as an intercom system. The GSC can be used as an intercom system uh, using the built-in sub accounts once you have them registered correctly. And then the device can receive paging or intercom calls and you will automatically answer the call from the whitelist number. So please be reminded that um, the different models, for example, GSC 3505 is a SIP one-way intercom and the GSC 3510 is a two-way intercom. So to register the SIP account, the user or the admin needs to go to the account page and then under the general setting, you can enter the account information, for example, the SIP user ID and um, also the SIP password. So this is an intercom system. So for example, once you have all the whitelist number con uh, configured, the GSC 3500 series unit will auto answer all the whitelist number. 
by default it will place a warning tone uh, when it answer, auto answer the incoming calls. The next one would be um, whitelist. So in order to accept all the calls or uh, accept or answer the calls, you need to make sure that you need to configure whitelist or you can configure even a, a blacklist. So you need to uh, block all a certain numbers uh, to be dialed out, to be coming in. So another list is called gray list. So the number they are not in the white or black will be con considered as a gray list. So under the gray list call, it has uh, four options or four rules to go for it. So by default, it will block all the non-white listed number, as I mentioned just now. It's uh, under the blocking rules. So all you need to do is you need to either um, allow non-white list call or the set up a white list that contain a number that will be allowed to call the devices. So if you set to blocks under the gray list, all the gray list number will be blocked. If you set the password options, all the gray list call will need to either enter the password before they can be answered. If you set auto answer, so the calls will be automatically answered. And lastly, ringing, all the gray list call will continue to ring. So the default ring time is about uh, one minute, 60 16. You can actually customize the time out uh, under the call setting and ring time out. But it's what uh, it is set to disable. So this is this will be under the intercom system um, scenario if we want to use the GSC device as the intercom or uh, as a SIP intercom system. So the second scenario will be multicast paging. So multicast paging is an different So all the seat user can listen to paging call when you subscribe to the same multicast IP address. When you have this uh, multicast call established, it will be a one-way audio connections, which will be set up from sender to receiver. So make sure that the multicast paging devices, they must be located within the same uh, broadcast domain or the same LAN local network. So in our GSC devices, it can support up to 10 listening addresses. So on this um, 10 listening addresses, you can actually uh, configure or set the paging priority active so that when you are having an active multicast paging, if another uh, paging calls coming in which has a higher priority, then it will be answered by first. So the devices can choose either to keep the seat call um, or the whole way to the last allowing depending on the paging call priority. So in the test scenario, the GSC 3500 series C speaker actually can add as a Bluetooth devices. So it will play a role of a speaker when it's connected to another device, for example, your mobile phone through the Bluetooth. But please um, bear in mind that it cannot use to control the call. So sometimes when you are playing uh, music over the uh, this C speaker and you get incoming calls and you you feel like feel like using it to control or disconnect or accept the call, so it does not support it. So it's only used as a speaker to the devices. So this is how it looks like under the Bluetooth support. So you can uh, configure or turn on the Bluetooth under the status, and then you go, uh, sorry, under the network setting, and then you go to a Bluetooth, and then you enable the Bluetooth options. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can set the with uh, you can set visibility, timeouts, or even you can set a configure the Bluetooth pin.
And lastly, um, our GSC 3500 uh, series devices can uh, support the 2P support 2P multi-purpose inputs and connect key with LED or normal key. So by configuring the sensor setting, the user can enable uh, the GSC, GSC devices to play an audio, for example, a voice prompt when the switch is triggered. So you can uh, actually upload the custom room tones and alarm. To dial out, so it can use to dial the pre-configured number when the switch is triggered as well. Call recording. So uh, when the switch is triggered, you can actually use it to call, to start recording uh, when, whenever uh, there's an input alarm there. And lastly, you can uh, control the lights to be turned on or off and it support parallel connection of a uh, lamp and a less than one watt or an LED lamp at less than 100 milli ampere. So there are a few specifications that you need to uh, identify before you actually start deployment, for example, what kind of, uh, what is the maximum input or output voltage of the two pin multi-purpose port? Because when you have the incorrect, um, how to say, incorrect use of it, and then sometimes it may not support it. So the maximum input or output voltage will be one volt or 12 voltage. And um, some customer might uh, wondering would the user able to connect actually a button, for example, uh, to initiate a phone call or maybe connect to a mechanical door switch, for example, a GDS, our GDS door phone. So actually the answer is yes. As long as the mechanical door switch is supported within the specified voltage, which is the tail voltage. Another, another thing that I would like to highlight is uh, how many, I mean, some, some of the customer or user would, would like to know what is the maximum cable distance to the push button. Actually, I mean, this device actually can support up to 10 meters uh, for the maximum cable to be connected from the button to this uh, GSC device. So these are some of the specifications or the limitation of the uh, GSC device. So this is the page uh, to actually configure the sensor setting. So you can go to the system setting and then the sensor setting, there are actually two types of uh, sensor type. First one is normally open, where the contact is disconnected when uh, there's no electricity. And then the other way is normally closed, means that the contact is connected when there's no electricity. And then you have uh, two types of trigger types. The H type, uh, sorry, the H trigger or the level trigger. For example, when you select the level trigger, only um, high level, high level of priority will trigger the notification. And then under, under the sensor setting, there's another option called trigger time. So this trigger time allows you to actually click on add in order to um, configure different schedules or different time timetable and trigger the profile for each. For example, you can uh, create um, or you can configure the cycle time. For example, you can create, uh, you can have it to trigger all day of the week or specify it, the days of the week with a start and end time. And then you can uh, play audio. So with this option check, the GSC will play a sound when the switch is triggered during the schedule. And then you can also actually um, select the prompt tone or upload the customized tones uh, when you want it to play. The next one is make calls. So when you have this to check, the GSC devices will dial out the configure number on the dial extensions. So far, it can support up to two numbers so when the switch is triggered during the schedule. And last one is the recording. So if you enable this option, the GSC will record the audio using the built-in microphone. And I, the recording can be found under the applications recording sections. 
So our GSC devices can uh, up to seven different schedule. So this of schedule and the date can can be and the lower section of the page where you can actually edit or delete the alarm in editing respectively. So uh, from the from the, all this slide will be mentioning about what are the application scenario can have a GSE actually work as, as or work as. Next one would be troubleshooting and maintenance. So these are the uh, um, the features that our GSC device can support. So it actually allows you to perform a system door backup so, so that these devices will be, will be available all the time. And it has a built-in system diagnostic tools to actually inspect the device quality quickly. And then it has um, it support a multiple fault diagnosis method and it can issue effectively. And then I see it has a system recovery where you can test a reset to actually reset or forcing the system to upgrade. So the backup, so you can go to the system setting backup and then here you can actually use this to back up the data or you can input the backup file to restore the data. So what you do is to click on the start backup button and you can um, start performing the system backup. So the data that can be restored are the history and the configuration information. And the next one is a multiple fault diagnosis method. So this is similar to our phone, the grand stream phone, where it, it allows you to capture or uh, capture the state cat debug uh, debugging logs, and then you can make a tracer out ping or even an NS lookup from this uh, GSC devices. Some with the or the SSM. If you are using the GSC to the to stream microphone, so doing the audio pass, it will be it will be very it will be three. And then it has a big, big text to actually to play a piece of music to verify the sound quality. And how we did test. And then it has a reset button test. So this is to test it. So during the, test, the testing, Trigger the factory reset. Allow actually check whether this button is actually so you can actually use this test the button at the devices. So this was, this is uh, this are uh, the last part of the presentation will be about the deployment scenario. As mentioned in the beginning of the presentation. It can work in, um, I mean, it can be deployed in the hospital and nursing homes, uh, hotel, hospitality, education system, for example, the school, office buildings, uh, shopping center, and maybe a smart home. So, for example, in a hospital, it can allow the doctor paging, emergency announcements, uh, department to department paging, for example, uh, between the labs or operation rooms. In the school, you can use this for the morning announcement. Uh, maybe, for example, it has a class period changes or emergency announcement as well. Retail and shopping malls. So our GNC 3500 series are suitable for, uh, you can use as uh, emergency announcement device 
in case I'm using a sales announcement for shop. So for example, in a residential building, you can actually use it in, uh, uh, for use it, uh, the button can use it for a resident entry. Educational, you can uh, install in the individual classroom for the course and hospital you can use it in the emergency room as well for the patient room. So that's all for my presentation. I saw a message Oh, sorry. I saw the Q and A. So John Rick asked, can we integrate this device with a traditional analog? Is a SIP compliant, then it should be working fine. But you still need to uh, check out a few specs before we deploy or actually present to the customer. So we need to gather the requirement from the customer as well. So Toby and John Rick are similar. So we need, before we integrate, uh, we need to check a few specifications. Um, for example, whether the analog system are actually uh, SIP compliant. So if they work that way, then you should be able to call, actually peer, peer them up and work together. So the present, I can share the presentations uh, link after that. After this, I will share the link to Kenny and then Kenny can blast to you guys. So in case anyone just join in halfway. So pretty much it's quite simple because it's about a uh, speaker in the comm system where you can actually work as a uh, something like a phone. If you want me to, I can uh, share the, not sure. So how is this laptop to have at the web interface? So this is the GSC. So this is GSC IP camera. So we have another one. So this is how my office looks like. Actually, I use this to, to monitor my office. Uh, this is my office. So um, as I mentioned, you get into, you, you, you either find out the IP address or you can log in using the HTTPS followed by the GSC dot underscore address dot local if you don't know the IP address and log in using the password. So this is how it looks like. Um, so it supports up to 16 SIP accounts. And you if you see this prompt message, it says that all incoming calls will be rejected right now because I do not have any whitelist configured under the uh, under the call section, which I mentioned just now. So in order to accept the calls, you need to actually uh, add the whitelist either from the contacts or the, you can configure manually. Let me check. Can we connect amplifier to these devices? So uh, unfortunately, it's not supported. What is the distance? Sorry, so Jumil asked about what is the distance of speaker to SIP server? Uh, can we use a fiber optic cable? Um, this one is the distance that we support is um, up to 10 meters. But for the optic cable, I need to check back uh, with my team and then get back to you. All right, Jumil. Uh, yeah, sorry, I think I did not mention your names correctly. Mm. Yeah, this is pretty much the web interface configuration looks like. I am not sure if I can zoom this one. Yeah, there's a phone setting you can configure a general setting, call setting, whether you want to enable the waiting call tones, call waiting, uh, what is the dial plan what kind of environment you need to use. So it has a, uh, you can set the uh, environment. I, either it's a large room or a small medium room to use as a, uh, in this case. And then network setting, you can configure uh, the IP address, whether you want it to be a DHCP or a static IP. Bluetooth, under the network setting, 
uh, you can enable this Bluetooth to be discovered by other mobile um, other devices as well to be used as the SIP audio devices. So you can configure the visibility time up either to be a uh, never two minutes, five minutes, or one hour. Yeah, it support Wi-Fi, so you can uh, enable it, and then you can connect it to the to the Wi-Fi SSID as well. And then under system setting, it has a time setting, security setting, preference, and then TRO69, whether you have a provision, provision, provisioning server. And then sensor setting, this is the one that I mentioned, you can configure the sensor types and then the trigger types. So when this is triggered, what kind of action you want it to be done? So you can uh, either you want it to play an audio to make calls or to record, to record, uh, to record, do a recording audio. Backup. So you can from time to time you can uh, perform a backup system. You can perform a backup to the system, and these are the data that allow you to backup call history, contacts, and configuration information. Then you click backup. And once you have performed a backup, it will show you the time and date and also the size of the file. And then it allows you to restore or delete. Maintenance. So under the maintenance, it allows you to upgrade. Uh, you can even upload the config file configure the provisioning um, provisioning config uh, configure the provisioning setting and also the at one setting so pretty much is similar to our um, our other phones model and the system diagnostic which I mentioned just now you can if there's an issues like for example you're unable to make calls or you have a hung, uh, crash issue or freezing issue you can actually uh, uh, do the I mean you can actually capture the system or perform uh, one lock, the debugging lock for us to actually, to send it up for us to actually analyze, analyze and review. So you can enable this call generation. Okay, so when sometimes a uh, customer mentioned that it crashes or it hang or it freezes randomly, so you can click on this enable call down. This is actually will generate a crash down whenever uh, it is not responsive. So under the application, there are two sections. One is the recording. Another one is the music. Yes, this is the place where you actually can enter or the radio, uh, enter the music address, file address, and then you will play the, the audio from the, from the URL. So the supporter file will be MP3 format. Lastly, will be the uh, diagnostic tools, which I mean, uh, I still need a slide. So it has the audio loop bed built in the speaker test, LED test, certified reset button, and then you can have the sensor detection. And lastly is the factory reset. Uh, if, you, if, you, the, if the reset button is not working, maybe you can perform a factory reset from the web interface as well. So this is pretty much about the GSC, uh, GSC speaker uh, to the 500 series. So if you have no other questions, just let me know if you have any other questions or maybe you can email Kenny, or you can open a ticket with us, that would be the quickest way to get um, the information. You're welcome. Yeah, I will send the presentation slide 
and then I will have Kenny to uh, send the link to you guys. Yeah, thank you for all your time in this morning attend the webinar. Thank you everyone um, for paying attention throughout the, the webinar. I appreciate all of you. Um, so if you have any questions, um, you could uh, send the email to uh, LOE actually. You have all the email, representative email. In. So again, thank you very much um, for, your, for your participants. So hopefully we'll meet you all um, at the at our next um, webinar, so maybe uh, LOE and will Grassroom will work together um, to um, support you better in any ways. So, yeah, of course you're going to get the copy of the presentation uh, from LOE, of course. And I recorded the session, so if you need any uh, recorded file, uh, maybe you could if you join, you know you know, late for this session, maybe you could get that um, material as well. So if you don't have any further questions, we're going to wrap up this session and we'll, Xing and I will probably meet you uh, at our next um, session. Thank you. Stay Thank safe, you everyone. Bye-bye.